Are we ready? You tell me when. Shabbat shalom to all of you. This is a very special portion. <laughs> and, you know, so, uh, people, they say, you, Rabbi, you always say this is a special portion. But this is one of the, 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 the real ones for me that has a lot of meat and meaning. Uh, Yitro, interesting, that is given to a, a, what a, a gentile priest, uh, the name of this portion, and here when we receive the word of God re revealed to us as the Ten Words, the Ten Commandments, the Ten Utterance, or the Ten Sayings, the way that we want to express it. I call it, these ten, ten words, the Constitution of Israel. And because it's the Constitution of Israel, it needs to be the Constitution of the world. One of the things through the year that I have been learning is about the, the fabulous word of God in his, in his revelation and how much we can gain and how much we can learn and grow together. The saddest part to me is that we divided ourselves and we become elites. The elitism becomes the most preponderant way to say, I am different than you are. And we start making groups and points that uh, we uh, start separating ourselves from other people, not for the sake of doing something for, the, uh, for uh, serving and being light to the world, but for the sake to say, I am better than you are. And you know, I learned through the years in my search for the creator in my own life. Because even though I grew up in a, in a home that they had an idea about the creator, you know, it, that was every, everything was very superficial. Was through the year going to university and become a, a professional, that you start having questions that they really matter. You know, be, believe me or not, before I became a true believer, it was, that sounds true, believer, sounds uh, oxymoron, but uh, it, it's the way that I used to be an atheist. And I was a proud atheist. Because I thought that only those people who had mental illness or limiting way of thinking, they could believe in something superior. Because we, as, as men, we have already conquered the world and, and we are our own doers. And little by little has experiences. I am so glad that my feeling myself like a pickup. You know, in Spanish, the pickup is called royal, uh, uh, the one that, uh, royal turkey, you know, uh, pavo real. And, and uh, I felt very inflated, a big one, you know. Um, in through those years, there were experiences that I was going through. And these experiences were moving me to the right place. Without even myself realizing that I was going to the right place, I started looking and searching. I had very hard experiences in my own family that, were as that forced me to ask me a question about life, about what we are doing here. If there is something greater than me, you know, and I am so glad that when teaching thermodynamics at a very young age, I found an answer through science about the presence of the creator, you know, through the simple law of entropy, you know? And that is how the creator started talking in my life and making me more aware, not only about how wonderful he was, but uh, his presence in me and how he started guiding me. But it was not easy. The way never has been easy when you listen to the Creator. Because there are many things that in your inner being need to be changed. I call it the paradigm shift. We need to change. But uh, we do not know in which direction or how. And that change is painful sometimes. Because your mind, your mentality, your way of thinking is one way, and the Creator is leading just in the opposite way. 
you know, and you had a tendency to go back. But the same way that we are very hard head, the Creator is greater than all of us. And He keeps leading us. And finally, we start finding Him. No, there is a process until you have an encounter with Him. And I call it to humbling yourself. There is no a greater experience than when you finally, you humble yourself before the Creator. And you say, you know, I have been all this time going against the current. You know, it's time for me to follow the current and to go to the right direction. Um, to humbling yourself means that you acknowledge your limitations. And you acknowledge that you cannot deny the things that are obvious. And you cannot any longer do whatever you want to do because there is something inside you that is telling you that you are responsible for whatever you do. And you start finally understanding about that you are the only one that has the capability to make decisions for yourself. If other people make decisions for you, you basically, you are only a simple follower, or you are only somebody who is tied or depending on others. You are not free, truly free. The Torah is teaching us, and the Creator gave us these ten, ten words, or ten utterances, or ten sentences. And, and this was for our good, and the call it, I call it this, the, like I say to you, the constitution of the world, too, yeah, for everybody. But our people who received these Ten Commandments or Ten Words, they decided that that was only for them. Because was, the revelation was in Har Sinai and was only for Israel. What a misrepresentation uh, of, the, of the, the revelation of the Creator. They were there people from all the nations. We don't, sometimes we do not want to accept that. But it was not only for Israel, it was for the world. Only Israel was representing part of those one who were receiving. But there were others that were listening to and they accepted and they received with Israel. But uh, through the years, this is what I call it, this elitism, you know, we are different than you are, we are better than you are, and start making an idea that we become better than others. Instead of when you have a true relationship with the Creator, just happen the opposite. For the first time in your life, you start learning about how little you are and how great is our Creator. And then you start humbling yourself before Him and you understand that you cannot be any better than anybody else because only you say that I am better. But uh, in yourself, uh, start growing something very special. And that is that you become the best that you are. And you don't need to compare yourself with nobody. You know, most of us, we're constantly comparing with others. Like, a, I can be better or worse than somebody else. Who cares? What you need to know is how good are you with yourself and how good can you be with yourself? And where you can get and quick, where you can go. And these 10 words or 10 principles are all that we need. We don't need any more. But uh, if you go to any constitution, you're going to see that we have libraries full of laws. You know, and we, the Israel, the Jewish people, we are the greatest, creating more laws than we needed for everything. And do you know one thing that many people do not understand? We have a system that we call it precedence. And that system is terrible. I want to tell you why. Because no any longer we are judged by our own actions. We are judged by the actions of others. We are no any longer responsible for what we do. We are responsible for what others have done. 
then that is precedent. And this accumulative on the laws of the laws of the laws. And every judge or every person that is in the position of giving or dictating laws will add it and add it and add it. And then you go back to the simple 10 words, the 10 utterances of the creator, the, princip the basic principles of life. And you say, what happened with this? I cannot understand it anymore. It's so heavy. It has so many things that now I don't know how to apply it. Because we have added so much that we have forgotten the essence of what the word of God comes from. And we think that we are very illuminated. We are very smart. And we have taken away the, the simple and clear revelation of the creator because every word that he has given to us is to give us direction about how to live and how to walk with him. Now we live in, in a society that is really sad. Right now, the society that we are living is almost all over the world. We don't have any longer those principles about the, the, the what I would call basic human decency. We don't have any longer the values about basic morality. Now we are in a society that we do whatever we want to do. And by the way, this is not the first time that that happened. If you do any study about history, it repeats itself. But and now we are even worse because we think that we have reached the climax of clarity and understanding of the human being. Enlightenment. The enlightenment of everything. We know everything and we don't need any more because we are so clear about everything. And now everybody is free to do whatever they want to do without consequences. And you know what is the sad part? We are more interested in things that are outside the human value. You know, and what is our humanity? And we have created what we call a religion that's called humanism. And this religion has totally erased the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words of God. Because right now, we are not under God. We are under ourselves. And God cannot play any role. I have seen people getting upset when you talk to them about the Creator. And they get furious and they want even to scream to you, how you dare to mention something that I don't believe on or uh, that is only for people who they don't have enough brains. And you ask yourself, why these people get so upset? It's supposedly they are more enlightening than you, and supposedly they are more advanced than you. Why do they get so upset when you mention the name of the Creator, or when you mention that you need to be under the power of the Creator, or to have a relationship with the Creator? Why do they get upset? Is the, is for them, doesn't exist, doesn't matter. Because there is something there that is affecting their own soul, then, Nefesh, the Neshama, what is inside of them. Right now, most of the people are reacting against the Creator because of the religions. You know, uh, how many times I have repeated you this? You know, there are two types of people that they are very similar. Politicians and religious people. What they have in common, they, in order that you follow them, or you give them, you support to them, they are going to promise you everything that you want to, to get. It. And they're going to tell you this, this is their medicine or this is the treatment. If you follow them and you do what they tell you to do, you are going to be in paradise very soon. <laughs> but you don't know which paradise they are sending you. 
you know. But, look at this, huh? but you have the husband to disagree with them, not only they attack you, they try to destroy you, to stop you. They don't want for you to talk. Right now, we are suffering that problem here in Canada. With this idea of hate, you cannot speak about even the Creator. You cannot, now the schools and everything, you cannot put the Ten Commandments. That's an aberration. How you dare to put God? And look at the moral turpitude of the people today. Today, our parents, and I say to you, parents of young children, you have a very difficult job. Because you need to fight against the morality of this world and the morality of this country today going down to drain. You know, I am the kind of person that I do not believe that I have the right to impose my morality on others. Vice versa, the others don't have the, the right to impose the morality. They, if they want to be immoral, they can do it privately. Why now it is something that is wonderful? Oh, look how great. Now he's so immoral that he's great. And you say something against that. It's a hate crime. Yes, we are suffering. And we are not popular. Many people say to me, but Rabbi, you, you have certain answers. Why you don't grow? Why you are no more popular? Why you don't have more people around you? It's very simple. Because the people need to be called by the, the creator. They need to be moved by the inside. And they need to understand what is right and what is wrong. No, no about to be judgmental, by the way. Not to look with your nose up and think, looking down like uh, most of the religious people do and separate. Totally the contrary. You need to humble yourself. And these Ten Commandments, Ten Words, are bringing to a certain status when we really learn it and understand it. There are no vain words, no, it's not a simple thing. It's simple in the word that is not complicated, but it's profound. And each one of us has the right to understand it in our ways that we can communicate it. It's not about to be an enforcer. It's about to communicate and to share. Because you will be surprised how many people are ignorant of the basic, simple ten words, ten commandments that the Creator has given to us. I have a theory. Um, and I say the theory because I cannot prove it completely and, and, and need, need things that need to be done. But uh, I believe that all creation of God, all human creation, we have received the breath of God, his Ruach, his spirit. And every one of us, we have that divine sparkle. All of us. Because we are humans, and we, we have been created to his likeness and image. That's what the Torah teaches. But uh, no, if, when we are born, we are born with that sparkle of life, of divinity, if we call it. And it's within us that God has put his word in us. You know, you, the anthropologists, they can tell you this. Even the most primitive, primitive group of people 
they has a set of rules and they has a set of morality among themselves. It's interesting. You can be very primitive, but there, are, there is an order. That tells you that all of us, we come from the same creator. And what the creator gave it to us, the Ten Commandments, is not something that we didn't have it, but I was so dispersed that we needed to bring it back together and to clarify. You know, there were before the Ten Commandments, already certain civilizations, they had a very developed shifting of laws. You know, you had the Arcadians. You know, you had the, the Codex of Hammurabi. You had the Hittites. The, co the different Codex before the Moshe Rabenu. And many of them, they had similar ideas to what we have in the Ten Commandments. That's what is telling me that the Creator has given to all humanity His presence. The problem is how we distort His Word. God gives His Word, and we as human beings, we have the capability to distort His Word. And that's what religion does. They tell you that, no, they are interpreting for you the word of God. And then they invent. God say this, but I say this and because I am later than the God who say it's better what I say. And we put in a position that we are the ones that are enlightening people. And what we are doing is bringing them back to darkness. Now you can understand why this parasha to me is so important. We have only 10 words. And you have heard me many times before. And these 10 words are in very special way. You know, there are three words that we use in the Torah. Misvot, Hukim, and Mishpatim. The Misvot, the, we can understand it directly as commandments. The Hukim as ordinances that doesn't have a really logical understanding, but they are there for our good. And finally, Mishpatim are the rights between each other and the, how the society works. You know? You know what, what is one of the greatest crimes that the religious people have committed? And when they call the Torah, when they call the Ten Commandments, the word law. That is a crime. Because it's not a law, as we understand it. And the Greek way, no most, is not a law. It is a principle that the, 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 the Creator is teaching us how to live. It's not to be enforced by, by penalty or something but for us to accept it and to live with them. You know what is beautiful? When you read very careful how the Ten Commandments were given to, the, to Israel and the people around Israel, the people before they receive it say, yes, we'll be doing it. And later on they say, we will do it and we will obey. And was an acceptance before the Torah was given to them. There was a relationship in two ways. The creator with us and us with the creator. And was no force upon us. Because we, can, we could say, no, we don't want it. Now we are in this century, 21st century. We have advanced technologically. We are, our limitations are, are, are amazing. We are the, we have the humanity is in the capability of self-destruction faster than any other time in the history of humanity. We have the capability now of self-destruction. We have so many different people around the world 
And each one is going to tell you I am wrong, right, and the other people I am is wrong. And one of the things that motivates men, the 99% of the people is selfishness. And you know what? I mentioned to you that the Creator has given us the free will behirah of she that applies responsibility. Because after that comes what I call a kavanah, the intention. And I would like sometimes to check the intention of the people. And you're going to realize how selfish we are becoming. Totally the opposite of what the Creator wants to create a humanity in which we can help each other and that we can look to each other instead of trying to destroy each other. I don't need to compare myself, I repeat to you, with anybody else, but I need to compare with myself. And I need to do the best that I can. In that way, I can be very uh, uh, active in this society uh, in a positive way. We are in very perilous times. We are right now on the, on the brink of self-destruction. And the destruction is not only to big weapons. We can destroy ourselves. Right now we are suffering an epidemic. And everybody is afraid. And you know, and they're going to come more like that. We as parents, we, we don't know what to do. We are children now because what are our values, instead to be taught in the schools now, they are totally destroyed. Our children sometimes, they think that their teachers know more than their parents. And that is so terrible. We have a government that they are pushing values that goes against the Torah. And we have problems. And those ones that we do not accept them, we need to shut our mouths. Because if we say something, we are going to suffer the consequences. And supposedly we live in this area in a free society, free speech. The only free speech that exists right now is when they talk against you. But if you talk against anybody or you say something that is honest, true, you are bombarded and you are attacked. That's the reason that we need to wake up of this nightmare. And it's time that we start talking and expressing ourselves. We don't need to be afraid that we do not agree with people. We don't need to fight with them, but we need to tell them what we believe. Most of the sometimes I see things, among, even among ourselves, when somebody comes with a different idea, and we say, okay, we're, yeah, you know? Like, uh, we're trying to be nice. You know, sometimes you need to say, you know what, I do not agree with you, period. I don't need to, I don't need to argue, but please, I don't agree with you. Period. I am not looking for a fight. But it's time that people know what you stand for. Um, are you with the Creator or you are against the Creator? There's no only other choice. And my prayer at this time, when God reveals to him in a, in a way that is so great, and he gave us his ten words, the constitution for all of us. That we don't need to add more laws. And this is the terrible thing about, like I tell you, laws. We don't need laws. We need those principles of life that the Creator has given to us. And not to be a person that is totally, totally, uh, legalistic. Legalism doesn't take us anywhere. 
we need to be flexible. We need to be open-minded. We need to try to understand others, but at the same time with the principle of the scriptures. Yes, we are going to disagree. Yes, there are going to be differences of opinion. Yes, but the truth never change. The truth is only one, you know? Uh, and doesn't matter how many people want to transform the truth that the Creator has given to us for their own benefit or for their own belief or for their own system. You know, if I want to justify my actions, doesn't mean that I am right. You, you try to justify yourself, justify with the truth. Don't justify with wishful thinking. God is with us. If he is with us, who can be against us? You know, and finally, in this parasha, Yitro. Yitro is no a, is no a parasha, it's not chronological, because according to many of the uh, sages, they tell us that Yitro comes after giving the, the Torah, the, the Ten Commandments, no? But what is impor important here to believe is even Jitro, being a Gentile, has word of wisdom. And this, we, we, the Jewish people, we are not the only one that has all the truth. We can find truth in different ways. Because I repeat, as I start to you, all humanity is a creation of God. All. And all of us, are, we are one, because he makes us one. And we need to understand this, that he gives us a lot of possibility to understand. I say to you, in this community, we have come to understand, to search for the truth, and not to follow people, but to follow God. We are looking and search everything. Don't be afraid to look everything. Search everything. Take what is good, get rid of what is not good. That is going to give us the path of way on life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And as I always say, you know, the truth is represented by the Creator. And He is whole truth. And He will never take us to the wrong way. Shabbat shalom.